Good day everyone! Today, we are going to discuss about anthropology as a perspective in understanding the self. I am your subject instructor for today. I am Edel Christian B. Palad. Traveling is traveling to a new country or to a new society is sometimes very stressful so as a, for some. So when you move to a new place, you're bound to face a lot of changes. It's natural to have difficulty adjusting to a new culture. But the good news is that culture shock is only temporary. So for our discourse for today, we are going to tackle about anthropology as a way of understanding the self-identity or the self-concept of the human person. So anthropology is the study of human societies and cultures and their development. So culture is the set of unwritten norms of conduct that guides the behavior of a group. So some branches of anthropology includes archaeology, cultural anthropology, linguistic anthropology. We also we also have a cool, uh, biological anthropology. So when we say archaeology, it is the study of artifacts, remains in the past in order to better understand how the civilization works in the past. So that is the focus of archaeology, by digging up or by studying artifacts and fossils. For biological anthropology, it's more on the development of the human, of the human person's characteristics and innate capacities. But for linguistic anthropology, we are actually talking about uh, language, development, and cultural anthropology is more focused on the culture and the society and their development in the civilization. So for cultural anthropology, we study how culture shapes human ideas and learned behaviors. So these are some terms that we need to uh, we need to be familiar with. First is ethnocentrism. So ethnocentrism is the tendency to judge other cultures by one's own culture. So when we say ethnocentrism, we are using our cultural lens. So when we say cultural lens, it is the structure of our learned behaviors and norms in a certain society. A good example for this one is, uh, for example, sometimes concubinage. So when we say concubinage is having one wife, uh, have, uh, having multiple wives of a single man. For other cultures, it is acceptable. But for... Uh, for the Philippine setting, we may see it as a not appropriate behavior in the society. So the attitude or the behaviors that we exhibited in looking into other cultures is what we call cultural lens. And the tendency to judge other culture by one's own culture is what we call ethnocentrism. The other term is what we call cultural relativism. So the cultural relativism is actually the respecting and accepting all cultures. So that is what we promote in the social sciences, cultural relativism. There is no, there is no inferior culture, nor there is a superior culture. So the first anthropologist that we are going to study today is Margaret Mead. So from 1901 to 1978. So she conducted field work in New Guinea, Polynesia, and other Pacific Islands. So her findings supported the notion that the learned culture is not biological in nature. Uh, the, uh, the idea of nurture versus nature. When we say nurture, it talks about learned behaviors in the society. You nurture. You are uh, by imitating the actions of your of the people in the society. That is how a child learns the acceptable behaviors in the society. But when we say nature, it is the innate characteristics or biological characteristics inherited from their ancestors that determines their learn their behaviors. So according to Margaret Mead, it largely determines human behavior. The nurture. So his is uh, so the study of Margaret made focus on the on the people of Arapesh, Mundagumor, and Picham Buli. So he is uh, so she studied a comparative study. This is a this is a photo documentation of her study. So the conclusion of her study is that most personality traits associated with masculinity and femininity are due to learned behaviors and not. Heredity. So nurture determines human behavior 
and not nature. So when we say masculinity and femininity, uh, we are actually talking about the raw gender of, uh, of the sexes in the society. So in his comparat in her comparative study, he com uh, she compared the behaviors of the Americans towards the behaviors of the Polynesians uh, in the New Guinea, the people there. Uh, their leader is actually a queen. So therefore, it's a matrilineal society. And for Americans, it is seen that it is more on the masculinity. So their leader is commonly referred to as man. So therefore, the conclusion of the comparative study is that the masculinity and femininity of the gender roles in the society is not actually inherent or it's not actually a biological uh, biological effect. Rather, it's because it is it was learned. It is a learned behavior. So therefore, nurture determined human behavior and not nature. So the Philippines is a small island. The world does not does not revolve around it. So the focus of anthropology is that to see the human person as shaped by the society. We are not looking in the in the my in the micro level, but we are actually looking into the macro level. So when we say macro a uh, micro level, it's on the individual level. But for macro level, we are actually talking about the society of man as a whole. So culture is the acquired pair of glasses through life, which we see, uh, through which we see life uh, from Mombarek a Morocco. So that is the main point of anthropology. So a good a good example of case study uh, where there is a uh, contradiction of science and uh, science and society. So the boy who was raised a girl from the human way. Actually, the story about the boy who was raised a girl is that nagkaroon siya ng problema during uh, during circumcisions. Pag, uh, nung, nung natuli yung, yung kambal na, na, na lalaki from, from the US, if I'm not mistaken, uh, nagkamali yung doktor. Kaya ang nangyari, masyadong maraming foreskin ang natanggal niya and that will lead to complications later. So, ang ginawa nila is that Ang treatment na binigay doon sa kamba, ah, doon sa bata, doon sa isang twin, kasi twins sila, twin boy sila, yung isa ay nagkaroon ng problema during circumcision, pinag binigyan siya ng hormonal treatment. So ang ginawa is ginawa siyang parang babae, pinalaki siyang babae, and throughout his life until nung naging 20 years old siya, ah, ang gumamot sa kanya is psychologist. Pinainom siya ng hormonal treatment, then trinit siya as girl. In the, uh, as girl. So, lumaki siya. Lumaki siya as a girl. Pero, hindi niya maintindihan. Kaso nga lang, mayroong mga questions regarding si regarding sa ethical conduct nung, ethical conduct nung, nung, nung experiment na yun. Nabawi niya na lang yung identity niya as a boy nung nasa 25 years old na siya. But the end of life, uh, nung nag-30s na siya, he, uh, he committed suicide. Actually, it is one of the uh, the problems. So although she he was raised as a girl because of his uh, of his uh, problem physical disability, at the end, nakita niya pa rin, nakita pa rin niya yung trato sa kanya ng society because the characteristics of his body is different from the characteristics of a normal girl. So therefore, the parents was forced to tell the truth to their child. So, doon na nagsimula yung, uh, yung issue about sa the boy who was raised a girl. So, although she was raised as a girl, the society itself see him as a boy because of his physical characteristics. And therefore, nung malaman niya, she, she cannot accept. So, ang nangyari at the end of his life, he actually wrote journal about his experience na ginawang ex, ginawa kasi siyang experiment specimen experiment sample ng uh, ng, uh, ng isang doktor yun yung nangyari another one is the feral children pag sinabi ting feral children sila yung mga children na hindi na alagaan mayroon tayong sampung example ng ng feral children especially in US uh, ang nangyari dito, yung mga bata na pabayaan sila upon birth. So, ang nagpalaki isa kanila is either yung isa is chimpanzee, yung isa monkey, yung isa is lion. 
Uh, kung maalala ninyo si Lai, uh, yung Tarzan, that is actually a good example of feral children. Hindi tao ang nag-alaga sa kanila. So therefore, they learn the behavior of an animals. So therefore, their instinct is not human, rather it's animal instinct. So that is that is actually some experiments, some sociological experiments and studies that proves that behavior is really learned from the society. Okay, these are some Filipino expressions or saying. So, you are invited to take a closer look into this saying by using the universal culture glass. A universal culture glass is more objective way of looking at these ideas and ways of living. So, kung maiksi ang kumot, matutong mamaluktot. So, what does it say? If you are lacking something, do not be extra mabagan. Kasi ang nangyayari sa mga Pilipino is that kapag nakukulangan na sila sa kanilang budget, inuutang na nila. Eh, that, that will be a bad impression or that will be a bad effect. So, kung maiksi ang kumot, matutong mamaluktot. Huli man daw at magaling na iahabol din. Ang taong di marunong lumingon sa kanyang pinanggalingan ay di makararating sa paroroonan. Naghangad ng kagitna, isang salop ang nawala. Ang lalagyang walang laman ay maingay. Ang tumakbo ng matulin pag natinig ay malalim. Kung hindi ukol, di bubukol. Kapag puno na ang salop ay dapat nang kalusin. Ang pag-aasaway di biro, di tulad ng kanin na iluluwa kapag napaso. So these are some sayings which, which can be found in our culture. So ano bang implications nito sa atin? By using these sayings, we are able to determine the values that our ancestors are able to tell us. Because even up to this day, this uh, these sayings are actually relevant because the behavior of man in the sociological uh, perspective, hindi yan nag even from the past. Nagde-develop lang siya. So these sayings are actually anthropological in nature. It tries to, to give an overview or lessons in the life of the people. So by using these sayings, we are able to instill the values from the society to an individual. So that is the view of anthropology of the human uh, in the human person. So saan nga ba nagmula ang kaisipang mga ito? So mga kaisipang ito nagsimula pa yan nung sinaunang panahon. Paano yan nagsimula? Because they see the relevance of this saying by observing the behaviors of the common People in the society, kaya nangyari yung mga kasabihan na yan, yung mga sa wikain, sa lawikain na yan, para maipahayag nila yung mga magagandang aral o magagandang values sa ating kultura para matutunan ng mga susunod pang henerasyon. So, paano nakatutulong o nakabubuti sa sarili nating pag-unlad bilang tao at bilang isang bansa ang bawat kasabihan? By following these sayings, kasi sabi nga nila eh, the more experience you are, the more view the more under the more you understand on how the society works ganun din siya the more you know the better you understand so by having these sayings as a cultural relics of the past we are able to know the views of the society of our ancestors kasi sometimes sabi nga nila ang di marunong lumingon sa pinanggalingan ay di makararating sa paroroonan so without looking back and to our future we might not be able to uh, to go to our right destination. Ganun siya. So, the cultural filters on automatic. So, yung cultural filters na yan, this is automatic. So, we see the and interpret behavior through our own cultural filter. Ito yung tinatawag nating cultural glass, yung cultural programs natin. Magkaiba ang cultural lens or cultural glass sa cultural filters. Pag sinabi nating cultural lens or cultural glass, we are trying to see other cultures based on our culture. Pero pag filter, we see and interpret behavior through our own cultural filter, yung cultural program natin. Although cultural program and cultural glass are somewhat similar. So the parents, friends, and relatives were simply passing on the message. So everything that we see in the society, uh, how we develop our cultural programs is through interactionism. That is how the symbolic interactionism tries to explain how does human person develop their self-identity is actually through interaction. So that is another perspective on anthropology.
So by interacting with different people, we are able to build our cultural filters, our cultural lens, our cultural programs, and that is how we see our own culture and the culture of other cultures. So because of cultural filters, dito na pumapasok yung tinatawag nating stereotyping. So mayroong iba't ibang uri ng stereotyping. Meron gender stereotyping. So pag sinabi natin gender role stereotyping, ito yung uh, ano yung trabaho na para sa kababaihan at trabaho para sa kalalakihan. So nakabase yan sa ating cultural program kung ano yung natutunan natin by our interaction with our parents, with our peers, in our neighborhoods, in our society. Kaya nga may sinasabi silang na kurso para sa kababaihan, may kurso para sa kalalakihan. So, there are also other characteristics sa para sa kababaihan. So, dapat ang kababaihan daw is understanding. Ang lalaki naman is aggressive. Pero that is actually a stereotyping. Because every individual is different, ang nangyayari, your differences or uniqueness is not actually acceptable in the society. So, ganun ang nangyayari. That is how stereotyping formed in the society. So, these are the some dilemmas of a society, yung hierarchy versus equality individualism versus collectivism, performance versus caring, uncertainty versus let it be, saka flexibility versus discipline. Yung hierarchy versus equality, actually, ang hierarchy, ang hierarchical society is Asian. Remember in the past, ang Asian is commonly pinamumunuan ng hari at reyna. Kaya nga meron tayong mga dynasties, kingdom sa Korea, and even in the Philippines, meron din tayong sariling hierarchy. Yung equality naman, nagsimula siya sa Europe. So, it is actually a dilemma in the society. Hierarchical ba or equality? Another one, individualism versus collectivism. Yung individualism naman is common behavior in the West. Yung collectivism naman is more on the East, more on Asian countries. Kasi Asian people love to work by group. Kaya kung mapapansin natin, even in the societies, magkakalapit yung mga bahay. Pero sa sa Europe or sa Western countries, uh, malalayo yung pagitan ng mga bahay. So that is actually a dilemma of the society. Magkakaiba siya per society. Performance versus caring. Yung performance naman, performance-oriented yung mga Western people. Yung caring naman is more on Asian. Because, because Asian people uh, tends to value relationship. Pero sa mga Western people, more on performance sila. So, uncertainty versus let it be. Yung uncertainty, pinaniniwala nito ng mga Western people. Pero yung let it be kasi, ugali to ng mga Pilipino or mga Asian, yung mayroon nga tayong kasabihan na bahala na. Actually, it's letting God do its work. Yun ang nangyayari, let it be. Yung flexibility versus discipline naman, para sa Western naman, more, they are more onto discipline. Sa flexibility naman, more on Asian countries or Asian societies, ito flexible sila. So, there are three ways which we can relate to culture. Either we confront, we conform, or we complain. So, what do we do when we confront? So, you believe that your behaviors are right, are the right behavior. So, for example, you are, you are migrating to U.S. Ang kultura ng U.S. is individualism. Pero ikaw, you are an Asian. So, therefore, you tend to, be, uh, you tend to form a group. So you confront their uh, their uh, their their culture kasi you believe that your culture is the right behavior. So that is one way of relating to culture you confront. But when you conform, ang ibig sabihin nito you adapt the you you adapt to the way you behave when you conform to the whole society. So regardless of your belief because it is the acceptable behavior in the society, you conform, you imitate. And this is how you how you relate with culture, you conform. But when we say you complain, you isolate yourself into a social bubble. Pag sinabi, pinag sinabi natin social bubble, you actually do not let other people enter or communicate or interact with you because you do not like their culture. So therefore, you isolate yourself. You segregate yourself with the society because you believe that your behaviors are right. So either you confront, you conform, or you complain. What is the difference between confront and complain? So you confront is that you do not isolate yourself. Rather, you confront it. You show what is your belief. But when you complain, you are actually, you believe that your behaviors are right. And then what do you do is you isolate yourself. But when you confront, you do not isolate yourself. 
So some challenges of cultural competence is diversity and inside job. Diversity goes beyond race and gender. No one is a target of blame for current to past inequities and human beings are ethnocentric. So diversity is an inside job. So when we say diversity is an inside job, it's on our own mind because every individual is different. And how you you view yourself on how you uh you reflect yourself, you portray yourself to others is actually your own understanding of yourself. So diversity goes beyond race and gender. So no matter race you have, Asian, Coast Caucasian, Europeans, gender, male or female, there is always a diverse uh, diverse characteristics because every individual is unique. So no one is the target of blame for current to past inequities. It's the reality. See, wala kang masisisi why there is inequalities or inequities because human natures are ethnocentric in nature because you view yourself on your own cultural program. So therefore, ibig sabihin ito, you cannot blame them kung mayroong mga tao na na racist. Yung mga tao na they don't they hate other races of people because in the first place, human beings are ethnocentric in nature. So exposing yourself to various culture is so vital towards personal growth. So understanding one another in the multicultural education is a very important aspect, especially that the world or the social space that we live is actually a global village. So we, inter we interact with other cultures. So in interacting with other cultures, racism, not understanding their culture and acceptance is actually a is actually against the rule of globalization. So when you expose yourself with other nationalities, cultures, and societies, you have an overview on what they are, what they are, what they are, uh, what are their culture, their belief, traditions, and there is a great ch greater chance for you to understand them. So you are putting your shoes or your feet into the others' shoes. Uh, it is actually a very vital towards personal growth. So it is time for parents to teach young people early on that in diversity, there is beauty and there is strength. So a good example of a view of anthropology. So two, Im two immigrants arrive in the United States of America and are discussing the difference between the old country and the U.S., one of them says that he heard that people in the U.S. eat dogs. And if they're going to fit in, they better eat dogs as well. So they head to the nearest hot dog stand and order two dogs. The first guy unwraps his, looks at it, and nervously look at his friend. What part did you get? So in this scenario, the dog that they are actually referring is the animal. But in reality, the dog that we are referring in the U.S. is the hot dog. Actually, this is because the view of dog or the term dog is actually as a different symbol for U.S. and for the Asian people. So when we say dogs in the, in the Asian countries, we are actually referring to the animal. But when we say dogs in the U.S., they are actually referring to the food, the hot dog. Okay. I hope you understand the lesson for today. Thank you for listening and have a good day.